Late in the war, as Germany's cities burned and its armies crumbled, Allied pilots began reporting something strange in the skies above Europe. Sleek, bat-shaped aircraft, faster than any fighter they'd ever seen. They came out of nowhere and vanished just as quickly. Most dismissed it as rumor. But the truth was far stranger. Deep inside a forest in central Germany, Nazi engineers were building a machine decades ahead of its time, a flying wing designed to strike faster, higher, and deadlier than anything the Allies could imagine. Its name was the Horton Ho 229, Hitler's stealth jet. A weapon of the future, born too soon. By 1944, Nazi Germany was dying. The Allies controlled the sky. Every day, waves of American B-17s and British Lancasters reduced German cities to rubble. Hitler demanded a miracle, a Wunderwaffe, or wonder weapon, something that could turn the tide. The Luftwaffe, once invincible, was being torn apart by Allied air power. Conventional fighters like the Messerschmitt Bf 109 and Focke Wolf 190 were no match for the swarms of Allied bombers. Germany needed something revolutionary. And two brothers, Reimar and Walter Horton, thought they had the answer. Reimar and Walter were not ordinary engineers. They were dreamers, obsessed with flight from a young age. In the 1930s, while most designers built aircraft with traditional fuselages, the Hortens experimented with something radical. The flying wing. Their concept was simple and brilliant. By removing the tail and central fuselage, they reduced drag and improved efficiency. The entire aircraft became one smooth aerodynamic surface. It looked alien, but it worked. When the war began, the Hortons joined the Luftwaffe. And in 1943, when Goering demanded a fighter that could carry 1,000 kilograms of bombs to London and return faster than any Allied plane, the brothers saw their chance. They submitted their design, the Horton Ho-9, later known as the Ho-229. The Ho-229 was unlike anything else in the world. It had no tail, no vertical stabilizer, only two jet engines embedded within its sleek wooden wings. It could reach speeds over 950 kilometers per hour, Fimamba, nearly as fast as a modern jet fighter. Its wings were made of plywood, bonded with charcoal dust, a strange choice that decades later proved visionary. Because that combination absorbed radar waves. Unintentionally, the Horton brothers had built the first aircraft with stealth characteristics. In December 1944, at Oranienburg Airfield near Berlin, the first prototype, the Ho-229 V-2, prepared for flight. Test pilot Erwin Ziller climbed into the cockpit. The twin jet engines roared to life, Junkers Jumo 004s, the same engines used in the ME-262. The bat-winged machine lifted smoothly into the sky. It flew beautifully, stable fast, unlike anything before it. But on its third flight, disaster struck. One of the engines failed. The aircraft rolled, crashed, and exploded. Ziller was killed instantly. The project was nearly cancelled until the Allies came closer. Now Hitler demanded his revenge weapon more than ever. What continued day and night? A second prototype, the V-3, was almost complete when American forces arrived. In April 1945, as Allied troops swept through Germany, a special U.S. task force called Operation Lusty was formed. Their mission, capture advanced German aircraft before the Soviets did. When they reached the Horton facility at Gotha, they couldn't believe what they found. A half-finished flying wing, 55 feet across, futuristic, smooth, and unlike anything they'd seen. The Americans seized it immediately and shipped it to the United States for study. 
The Soviets arrived days later and found only empty hangars. The Horton brothers were captured and interrogated. They insisted the Ho-229 could have changed the war if they'd had just a few more months. They weren't wrong. The jet's radar signature was far smaller than any other aircraft of the era, nearly invisible to Allied radar at long range. Its speed and altitude would have made it nearly impossible to intercept. But the war ended before it ever took flight in combat. The surviving prototype was stored away, forgotten for decades. The ideas behind the Horton Ho 229 did not die in 1945. Across the Atlantic, captured German scientists, through Operation Paperclip, joined American research programs. Their aerodynamic data and flying wing experiments inspired a new generation of aircraft, from Northrop's YB-49 bomber to the B-2 Spirit stealth bomber decades later. In 2008, engineers at Northrop Grumman built a replica of the Horton Ho 229 and tested it under radar. The results stunned them. It had stealth capabilities comparable to early modern stealth designs. What the Horton brothers had built in a forest workshop in 1944 was 40 years ahead of its time. But the Horton brothers were not Nazi fanatics. They were scientists, obsessed with flight, not ideology. Reimar Horton later said, I built it to fly, not to kill. Yet in the end, their genius was trapped in service of a collapsing regime, a regime that could turn even dreams of flight into tools of destruction. Today, the last surviving Horton Ho 229 rests in a Smithsonian hangar, its wood cracked, its wings silent, its promise unfulfilled. It stands as a relic of the war's strangest truth, that desperation breeds innovation and that progress often rises from the darkest corners of human history. The Horton Ho 229 never flew in battle, but its shadow still soars above us in every stealth aircraft that crosses the skies today. The Flying Wing, Hitler's stealth jet that came too soon, History remembers the conqueror, but sometimes it's the dreamers who shape the future.